college, high school, Pop Warner, Power to Play, they'd much rather take a shot from anybody on their team from right here than they would from Steph Curry or the, the circle that was. Literally Steph Curry. I'd rather have any one of you take a layup than, than have Steph Curry and my team shooting threes back there. What makes Steph Curry great? He can shoot from back there, but he can also fake you out, dribble around you and three other people, and then shoot a layup for him. Plus pass, plus dribble, plus, I mean, that's about it. He's okay on defense, he's kind of mad. Well, look who he's playing again. It's a different ball game when you're playing against a guy, even when you get to the next level. If you're playing on varsity, I don't know, I guess I can't, I'm trying to remember back. 5A definitely. 5A, you're going to play against 7 footers, 6'8, 6'9, 6'10, all day, every day. Out here, going to Windsor and these other places, 6'5, 6'6, sometimes maybe. I mean, you're, you're not going to run into to someone any later than that, probably. And so, take advantage of the skill sets that you can develop in working a team, working an offense now. Because, like I said, they aren't going to slow down for you next year. You either understand this stuff, and you, they integrate you into it, or you don't, and you're playing on a ninth grade C team or something. I don't know if they have these things. That's what they have when I was you either A or C team. I don't know if they didn't have a B. I don't know. There was a sophomore team, had a sophomore A and a C. Then there's JV, then there's varsity. So there's like six teams you can be on. Depending on your level of skill, your understanding of the game of basketball, a freshman who plays on varsity his first year has skills, but more importantly, understands the game of basketball. A coach is looking more for someone who gets it, who understands the purpose of the offense. I'd rather have 11 guys on our team that know how to run the offense than 11 guys that can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Because eventually, that team of one-on-ones, AKA the last four or five years worth of Thunder, where they had Durant and they had Westbrook. And then who else did they have? Ibaka, he's not on the team anymore. Steve Adams, uh, the Right? But what are those guys? Nothing. Without Westbrook and without Durant now. Technically, now Westbrook's proven they can do it with just Westbrook. But do you think, do you think that they can beat the Spurs? Or the... Um, Cavaliers or the Warriors. Teams that play as a team, play defense. No way. I promise you, if, if, if Westbrook made all the way to the finals against LeBron, I promise you they would change what they're doing on Cavs and they would probably put LeBron on Westbrook. You shut down Westbrook, you shut down the whole team. You shut down LeBron, Kevin Love reigns threes. Or Kyrie Irving. Or, or, or. It's a team. Same thing, sometimes guys are gonna figure out somebody's gonna be in groove that day and they're gonna try to shut you down. Each level as you get higher in this, the more coaches are gonna play dirty. Right now they don't do it because it's not considered sportsmanlike. But on the next level, that's when I started to learn what a box one was. Anybody know what a box one is? What's box one? When you have four people and then one person at the top. Is that right? That's, that, what that's pretty close. You have, you have four guys playing a 2-2 zone against four players, and one guy's job, whoever their best player is, as soon as he gets in here, here, you're there. And wherever you go on the court, there's a guy right here, no matter where you go. What's that for? Shut down a Russell Westbrook. Have any of you ever faced a box one? Do you know why? I just told you, because it's not considered sports for life. But you're one year away from that being, let's do it. We're gonna shut him down. You're, you're about to enter a level, and the varsity level nowadays, with the technology that's available, you're gonna study film, you're gonna get, you're gonna get scouting reports on other teams, you're gonna get 
all this stuff to try to take advantage of the other team's weaknesses. But again, it starts here. It starts now with us, you guys, working together to learn this stuff together. If you don't commit to this and you don't want to learn this as a team and you're not communicating outside of this gym about basketball, about things, and if it's not on your mind, then you're not committed, you're committed to it at the level you need to be to be successful. Because I've seen a lot of you around town, other things, and other sports and things, I know all of you have the ability to put dedication into sports. Whether it's baseball or wrestling, you guys know. And again, if you're doing this for fun, if you're doing power play for fun, that's, I support that, I want you guys to have fun. Let me know though. Because what I'm trying to help you guys do is learn the skills you're going to need to get to the next level and to be successful. Who wants to play varsity when they're a freshman? Everybody should. If you love basketball, that should be your goal. How do you get there? Well, work. It's by yourself, with other people. You make each other better. So make each other better. The focus of your even if doing it wrong, they're still successful. I don't like to reward mediocrity, and I don't like to reward when people get away with doing things the easy way, taking the, the cheap way out. Not finishing your pick, not doing your slide steps when someone's dribbling on them, not making sure your hands switch, not making sure you're communicating. You gotta make eye contact with somebody before you can set a pick. <laughs> you can't just run up there. If you don't make eye contact first, what happened? Both of you had it happen, yeah. You run out there, what happened? Then you feel like you just walked up to the girl and won't talk to you. <laughs> right? Like, what do I do now? Now I'm out here, I've already committed to it, now what? Right? So, so don't, don't even go out here unless you've made eye contact with him. If he's busy going like this, don't worry. Next time out, I'll make sure I'm telling him. You gotta, you gotta keep your eye down. But if you don't get this fundamental stuff down, if you can't just run a basic, how am I gonna install plays? That was a question, that's not rhetorical. How am I gonna install plays if you guys can't run the basic off? I have to try. But if it takes us two months to learn just how to do what we've been practicing tonight, then guess what we're going to do for the next two months? That's what we're going to practice. So you get this right. Because if you can't go to the next step, I can't get you to the next step without getting this step done. Go back to the last practice. How confused was everybody? Was anybody confident with their work? Okay? Nobody was. And I recognize that. And I want you guys to know I recognize that. Why today I tried to make it simple. And it was simple. When I had you guys slid down, what did it seem real easy? We were kind of running around, didn't really mean anything. I kept trying to tell you, at least on my end, treat this as though there's a guy guarding you. Because once, the, once there's a guy guarding you, especially one that knows what you're trying to do, what happens? It gets real tough real quick, doesn't it? And now we're into what? Reacting, not thinking. If you're busy trying to react to what the defense is doing to you, instead of thinking, what can I do to get the defense out of position, that's when we lose. That's when we turn the ball over. That's when we travel. That's when we don't know what to do. That's when we try to set a pick and they're not ready. The keys to this game are working together, defense, moving your feet. Not in that order. Moving your feet is number one. Where your feet are, another person. YouTube, Darren Williams. He used to play for the Jazz, now he's on the Nets, I think. So now the Mavericks, or wherever the heck he is. Watch him. I watched him live at, at the Pepsi Center against the Nuggets once. By far, in my whole life, I've never seen someone play guard, the position of guard, with better footwork. He says, pick me. Every, everything, everything's on point. His drop steps, everything, the whole game. Not in slow motion, I'm talking full speed. If you want to model your game against somebody,
Tron Williams as a guard. Um, Kawhi Leonard as a, as a forward. If you watch how him or Steph Curry, how his footwork, same thing with Clay Thompson. If you watch him when he's, when he's, they aren't running picks like, they aren't running back and forth like this. Those guys are sprinting and he catches the ball and what is he doing right away? What happens to the ball? 50% of the time or more, splash, right? Think about it. Who wants to try it? Who thinks they're good? Okay, I'll let you try it, Jack. Start on that baseline. This is the ball. Go all the way to that baseline. Sprint. That's not sprint. Think about back over there. Sprint. I'm talking sprint. Sprint. 